The Ballister Molina, designed and built in Argentina by Hafdasa. And Hafdasa stands for a long list of names that I'm not going to even attempt to pronounce. But needless to say, these were an alternative to the M1927 that was being used by the Argentine Army. And the 1927 was a licensed copy of the Colt 1911A1. Now, the Ballister Molina has some similarities that we're going to look at, but there's also some major differences. And this is not a copy of the 1911. In fact, it's more closely related to the Spanish Star. Now, these were designed for military and police use, and manufacturing began in 1938 and went into 1953. But many of these are still in service, not only in Argentina, but in other parts of South America. First thing, we're going to safety check the pistol. Now, there were certain criteria the baluster needed to meet before it was accepted by the Argentine Army, and one of those was to accept Colt magazines. And all of your baluster Molinas will accept any of your standard Colt magazines. You know, it doesn't have to be proprietary to the pistol, which really makes it nice for us that like to shoot these pistols. Of course, the barrel is also interchangeable with the 1911. Uh, the recoil spring and the barrel bushing are all interchangeable with the 1911s. And it uses the exact same locking system as the 1911s as well. But the differences are, and one of the first and most prominent, is there is no grip safety. It just has a standard grip in the back, very similar to the Star Pistols. And it also has a really nice beaver tail that comes out much better than your standard government model. Now here we have a government 70 series Colt. And you can see right away, of course, you have your grip safety. And also with this tang, it doesn't come out near as far as it does with the baluster. Also the grips themselves are proprietary. You can't put Colt grips on here. The screws are not aligned in the same position. And typically, they do have this ridged look. I've, I know a couple of guys that have had grips actually made for their baluster. Uh, these grips were really in good shape, and so I've just wanted to retain them because of the historical value of the pistol. Of course, the slide cuts are definitely different. And here you see your standard Colt uh, slide cuts. And then the trigger guard itself is a little more slanted. Coming up with the Colt, it's a little more level. Now, another pretty major difference is in the trigger. This is a pivotal system. Whereas in the old Colts or the M1927s, it's a slide system on the trigger. Now, they were standard seven-round magazines, typically with a serial number here on the base plate. And then this F with a circle around it is what you're seeing on most of them. This one was actually bent pretty good when I got it. And I uh, just kind of straightened it out. But obviously, I can use any type 1911 magazines, which makes this really sweet. Of course, this has the older style safety, and that's probably more from the 1927 model design. Slide release is the same, even your mag release. Everything is pretty much the same. If you're used to shooting a 1911, uh, this is going to feel pretty much the same in your hand. The Ballister Molina handles great at the range, uh, very similar to your Colt. Uh, one of the things you don't have to be concerned about because of this grip safety being absent is having a really strong grip in the right place. And many of your 1911s, that's not a problem, but sometimes, you know, just getting that grip in the right spot. Uh, this just takes that away. It handles the same, it feels the same, and of course it takes the same magazines. Now even with rapid fire, it pretty much centers the rounds pretty close. It's a very natural pointing firearm. And uh, that of course, because it's a 1911 style, it's just going to give you that same type feel. 75% of the rounds are right in this area. And you can see they're doubling and tripling up. You're really getting some good accuracy. Of course, you have your regular barrel bushing system. This is an excellent piece of history and definitely effective. And you got to love these big slugs. Just incredible. It does have an integral mainspring here, so it doesn't have the separate housing that you have on your 1911. And it does have a lanyard loop on the bottom. Now, this particular model, you may notice that the sights seem to be a little more modern than uh, 1938. And they are. These have been replaced. In fact, they're night sights. Uh, when I bought the pistol, they already had those on there. But they typically come with your really low-profile government-style sights. has the Argentine crest right here, and then lettering on both sides of the slide. In fact, there's a pretty detailed description of the pistol on this one side. The serial number can be found right on the barrel and also right here beside the mainspring housing. And this particular model has matching serial numbers. The mainspring housing is arched and there is some 
serrations that follow the line of the mainspring housing but the front strap is smooth. Now the British procured about 10,000 units of the Ballister Molina during World War II. And in fact, they traded steel, which was much needed in Argentina. And a lot of these saw action with the 8th Army, which was all over North Africa, but also with special operations executives all over Europe, behind enemy lines. And those that were used with the SOE uh, did not have British markings at all on the pistols. Now the British Ballister Molinas are very rare and have a real high value. Uh, typically the uh, serial number starts out with a B and it starts out with 12,000 to 21,000 in the serial numbers. There was also a 22 long rifle model made uh, for training purposes and there were these are very rare and highly collectible. There are also Navy units, Air Force units, some of those have some collectability as well. Now I was on Gun Broker and Guns America earlier just kind of checking out the value of what these were going for and they started out around the $400 range but all of those had no finish whatsoever and were really rough looking. Uh, some went up to $1,200 and beyond, just according to uh, the collectability, the finish, and the condition. They're getting more and more hard to find. I purchased my first Ballister Molina back in the early 90s when they first came into the country, and dealer price was $148. Bucks. And those typically sold for around $200 to $250. And it's like I've said before, guys, when firearms start to come into the country and they seem to be really cheap, and just a great deal, it's a great time to buy it because sooner or later supply will dry up and when that happens the price will rise and it will meet the value of the, of the firearm itself. Disassembly of the pistol is very similar to the Colt. Of course the gun is unloaded. First thing we want to do is turn the barrel bushing to the left and this is going to release your recoil spring plug so you need to be careful because it is under tension. Once we get that tension released, we're going to bring the slide back to this notch and push your slide release out. This releases your barrel. And you can go ahead and turn the barrel bushing this way and release the barrel bushing. Pull out your guide rod and your recoil spring. Take your barrel link, go ahead and push it in the down position then just wiggle your barrel and it comes right out. It does feature one of the solid barrel bushings. And everything up top is pretty close to the same. And from this angle right here, the bottom looks pretty close as well. But there's some differences inside. And I'm not going to break this down totally, but just to give you an idea of how to field strip the pistol. Now one thing you can notice here, and I was talking about this being a pivot trigger. When I release the trigger, it goes to the down position to pivot more than just slides back like your 1911. And it is a two-stage trigger. So you pull it and then it releases the sear and then brings the hammer down. To reassemble, just go back in reverse order. You want to make sure the barrel link is this way and not bound up by the recoil guide rod because you're going to need to fit your slide stop through there. Go ahead and find your barrel link, get into place, snap it into place. Now go ahead and put our recoil spring plug on, get the barrel bushing Then we turn it to the left, push the plug down, and then just bring the bushing back over it into place. Back in business. Not one malfunction, not one failure to feed and the slide held back every time. The Ballister Molina 45 ACP semi-automatic pistol. It's a great piece of history, a great shooter, and a lot of fun at the range. Be strong, be of good courage.
God bless America. Long live the Republic. I've on this You're a kid. The Ballister Molina from Argentina. We don't need no stinking coat, man. <laughs>